Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of almost all ages, with parental consent. The Sick Twisted Minds at Sacrificial Pond Productions brings you a new style of horror film, like nothing you have seen before. There are no cops, no investigations. There is no backstory, no follow-up of the victims who are brutally tortured and murdered. Our story isn't about them. Normal terror is about a single dad struggling to make ends meet. His son is his first priority. He goes to work, pays his bills, and is generally a great dad. The twist comes after he puts his son to bed. This is where he releases his stress. Some people do yoga, some hit the gym, some go for runs, some people paint on a canvas. An anonymous source once wrote on an abandoned asylum wall, I never understood people until I took one apart just to see how it worked. If you are rear-ended in traffic, most people's thought runs to anger and their primal instincts of hurting the other party. Sam Neill does not have the ability to stop that primal instinct. Let us take you into the mind of a killer. Normal Terror is a concept from the mind of Sam Mason, who wrote, directed, produced, and is starring in this new age feature film. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another awesome, exciting episode of Horror with Sir Sturdy. I got my brothers from the Nightmare Shop over out in St. Louis. Greg and John, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Good, Sir Sturdy. Uh, we've been chilling, watching some badass, freaking scary movies. How have you been? I've been great. I've been really awesome. good, man. And um, I'm going to say it right now, people. If you haven't checked out their shop, you definitely need to check out their shop because these guys are fucking great. They will treat you great. Tell them Sir Sturdy sent you, and who knows? You might get a little uh, discount. Maybe, maybe not, but tell them Sir Sturdy sent you. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. We're going to have to check the facts. But... <laughs> It'll be a scary surprise. Follow this podcast. Follow those guys. Tell them I sent you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. So uh, the movies that we're going to be doing today are the Paranormal Activity movies, the first two. And um, I'm just going to jump right into it and tell you guys. I wasn't too crazy about these movies. I'm more of a slasher type person. or And, like, I like paranormal type movies, but I like more violence in them. And these were kind of yeah. too calm until, until like, the end of the movies is when the crazy shit really started happening. But yeah, yeah. I like more wild shit. So what do you guys think? Uh, I, I think uh, the first one scared the shit out of me, man. <laughs> <laughs> the first one scared the shit out of me. Dude, dude, we, me and John... Watched this movie, not really knowing much about it. We were bachelors, um, just living up the single life, doing nothing on a freaking, you know, Wednesday night, no responsibilities. John's like, dude, let's go see this freaking ghost movie. I'm like, all right, I'm down. Horror, you got me. You pulled me in. Mm -hmm. So we go watch it, and before you know it, we're going home watching fucking Step Brothers on our living room floor <laughs> because we don't want to go to bed at night freaking terrified. I couldn't sleep alone. Holy shit. I need Gusty Greg with me, man. You guys, uh, did you guys share a bed that night? <laughs> no, we, we, we shared the living room shared, floor. C- come on, sir. sir, sir listen, come listen. On. You guys are like brothers. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you, <laughs> you sleep you sleep back to back. That's cool. <laughs> we had to. I was freaking terrified, man. And I have to sleep with no shirt because I sweat. <laughs> Oh, oh man, it happened. It was so scary. I the, was whole, scared. the whole night I'm rolling over, just seeing the sheen off his stomach was awful. I finally went to my own bed. <laughs> Didn't know if it was an apparition. <laughs> Didn't know what was on. Didn't know what kind of activities were happening. Oh man, no, that's this awesome. Was scary. And this was like scarier than any found footage movie I had seen. Because like, what do we have? The Blair Witch Project, the original, that kind of sucked. The it was cool because you it didn't was know cool if it was at the real. Time. You yeah. know if it was real, but like. 
you know, you had this, you had stuff like, uh, I think Quarantine may have came out before, Paranormal Activity. Yeah. But, like, a lot of these... Let's uh, say Chernobyl Diaries quarantine. right after. Yeah, a lot of these found footage films, um, kind of, most of them do miss the mark. Um, like, you were, you know, kind of portraying, you felt like, about mm-hmm. this one. Uh, but I thought this one, especially the first one, hit it really good because they made this movie for, like, 15,000 bucks. Really? And it, yeah, like, the budget was small. Like, the budget was a small car. I think the director traded in his Toyota Corolla. <laughs> wow. Bought the equipment and made this fucking movie. That but gives like, me a little more respect for that movie, just knowing that that budget and, 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 was that low. Like, millions of dollars. Millions and millions yeah. of dollars off this movie. Like, top their budget, like, 400, 500 times. Like, it was crazy how successful it was because, like, the effects were really good, like the white powder steps and, uh, you know, what's some other effects? The well, bed movie. It was a lot of simple effects that, done you right. know, yeah, done, done correctly. Um, the angles in the movie, the lighting yeah. of the movie, you it's know. Like, it's like food, man. Like The, the Ouija food board right. lighting on fire, you know, stuff like oh. that. Um, I miss the blood and the guts. I miss the, the violence in mm-hmm. some way. I think there was some violence in yeah. it at the end when, when Mika's, you know, hurled at yeah. the camera. Yeah. But um, it was sus- it was very highly suspenseful. Yeah, it's it's a different kind of horror, it, yeah. and and really it w- it kind of gave birth to Bloomhouse, which now now Bloomhouse has all these paranormal movies. Oh man! And you know we'll probably get into those in a little bit, but I I just I don't know I just think that uh, I miss you know what scares me is some of that you know bludgeoning and violence and blood, uh, but this movie freaking. <laughs> <laughs> this movie scared me on a whole different level, you know, this to where it's just like I'm scared to like, you know, I better turn the light on before I get up and take a piss. This movie scared me like <laughs> this movie scared me like Red State. Like it was just kind of like a looking back and forth, like what the fuck, how, but what, huh? Oh, oh my god! It just it was so suspenseful. It was like Scorsese directed a fucking haunted film. Yeah, it was cool. And this guy directed, he ended up directing this really cool um, found footage movie called Area 51. It's on Netflix. Um, but it, it's like kind of a found footage, obviously, alien movie. But there's a really cool scene with these cars in a tunnel. And these aliens kind of cover up tunnel ends and, like, you know, torture these people inside it. Oh, that's fun. So, I don't know. It's kind of – he does these little found footage movies. Like, I know he did Area 51. I know he did – I just – I think he only directed the first Paranormal Activity and then just kind of produced or wrote the other ones. I know he – I think he had part in Chernobyl Diaries as well. So, that's cool. That's that's awesome right there. Yeah. But, yeah, like – like I said, my favorite genre of horror is definitely slasher by far. I don't, I like, don't get me wrong, I like paranormal movies, but like I said, I like more just, more going on in the movie. I felt like with these two movies, there wasn't really enough, for me, there wasn't really enough going on throughout the whole movie. It was just kind of like, you know, family talking, whatever, complaining, crying, and then some crazy shit happens, and then it's calm again for a while, but it, yeah. it wasn't terrible. They weren't terrible at all. They're actually pretty decent. It's just not my... You know what it is, too? Is It's like... It was a first-time watch for me, believe it or not. Like, I just watched these movies a couple months ago. So maybe when it came out, I would have liked them a lot more and respected them a lot more. Because, you know, a lot more shit similar to those paranormal movies came out. Like, The Conjuring came out way after that, and that's so much better than these. Not knocking these movies, but I'm just saying, like, had I watched it when they came out... Yeah. It, it is true, though, like, you know, these movies have a lot of rise and fall and rise and fall, um, whereas, you know, some of your favorite slashers, you know, have just a constant rise, constantly going. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's worse, worse, the body counts higher, the kills get gorier, um, there isn't as much time in between everything, so there's definitely, like, uh, yeah, this the movie... appeal is hard to reach to certain people. This movie is scary because it makes you think where slashers are more, like, visually mm-hmm. scary yeah. and frightening. I could yeah. see that. I agree with that. I think it's another special... another thing why I gravitated towards um, slashers more is because that's, like, what I was introduced to when I first got into horror is slashers. So it's, like, that just... It's weird to say this. I mean, not for a horror fan, but just it's weird in general to say this. It's, like... That brings me back to a good time of my childhood watching <laughs> slasher yeah. movies. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Freddy 
Jerry and Jason and Michael, Chucky, and all your old slashers, like when we were young, like I remember having imaginary friends, like good versions of them that would protect me from the bad ones, and then the bad ones would win, and I'd be stuck with them secretly. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of friends, dirty. Hey man, you got one to me now. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. You all, <laughs> all the all the way out on the East Coast. Heck yeah. yeah. No, it's it, it, some of those old slasher movies. Um, sometimes you could just see the cover, and you're like, ah, oh, hell yeah. I, yes. I remember that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I see an old Pumpkinhead cover, yes. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's kindergarten right there. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's awesome. <laughs> you know, and that's just how it is. I don't know. Oh, but I, I I guess uh, the way you were introduced to slashers, like I think my first, you know, you know, memories of horror movies for me were more creature features like Alien or Pumpkinhead, mm-hmm. Predator, yeah. stuff like that. That's kind of what got me into horror. And then I eventually I was just like, wait, wait, who's this Leatherface, bro? <laughs> Who is this? Why is he wearing leather on his face? <laughs> oh, it's skin. Oh, it's, it's skin. It's not his skin. Awesome. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's so true, though. Like, it's just what it's what you for as far as anything goes. I'll just stick with the horror thing. Like, what you were first introduced to, I think, is what you're gonna grasp to a lot more, and kind of stick with. And then just another thing with the slasher thing, it was it was from the '80s. I mean, I was born in '85, but that was like the most popular shit in the early '90s. Even like you had the Halloween, you had Freddy and Jason. All their sequels were coming out. And then, yeah, all their sequels, and then you had you also had Leatherface. Can't forget him. So you had all these, all those type of movies. You're seeing people getting diced up and stabbed and cut up. You're just like, this is fucking amazing. And right, right. even from a, even as a kid, I was always rooting for Jason and all those. I'm just like, get these motherfuckers. You have no business at that camp. Kill them. <laughs> <laughs> I always want the bad guys to win, and my my wife gives me crap about it sometimes because like. Uh, I actually just wrote a blog on The Burning, which is a slasher, um, and there's a, a character in there named Glazer, and he's Glazer. This, he's this like stereotypical '80s uh, douchebag, preppy. douchebag preppy. All I care about is girls. Make fun of the dorks kind of person, mm-hmm. and he's like one of my favorite characters in it. Not because like <laughs> that's cool to do, but he just nailed the role, and he says shit in the movie like. I'm going to break your legs. You know that? Like, <laughs> shit like that. Like, he's just perfect. And, like, eventually he get, ends up getting torn up. But um, those are the best. Th- those kinds of – <laughs> the bad guys are always the best ones to me. I think it's it's harder to get someone to like you, but it's probably funner to be that bad guy. Those are, like, the best – characters in movies the ones that you hate because they do you got to think about it like they act that part out so good that it's like yo if i see this dude in real life i want to punch him in his fucking face because of this movie Uh, that's how good they do there are some characters in horror where it's like man if i ever if i ever met this dude like i know instantly because you know god forbid they do a good job but because they do such a good job you're like oh you're such a fucking (laughs) right absolutely who was that guy in the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre? The guy in the in the wheelchair. Franklin. I could punch Franklin in the face. <laughs> I, I don't know Franklin if that guy is worst. still around, but that Franklin was the worst. Uh, oh man, he was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking Franklin. One of the best parts in that movie I is punch Franklin. After um, I don't care if you can't use Blake. <laughs> I don't even care if it's dirty. <laughs> it's all good. After they kick that. Uh, the brother out of the van, and he smears the blood all over the van. Yeah, mm-hmm. he stops. One of my favorite Franklin parts <laughs> is he's looking at his little pocket knife that he cut it, and he was like, You think that's blood on there? <laughs> oh, that's blood, all right. You think you could do that to yourself? Just cut yourself like that? <laughs> and, like, it's one of the only times in the movie where I'm like, Oh, he's a fucked up dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he's already, this is going to sound really bad, but he's already, you know, impaired and. Seems throughout the movie like his impairment is what runs his life and isn't one of those people who can overcome and run a marathon and, you know, do these great, amazing things, even though they were, you know, held back by certain circumstances. So in that line, to me, it was like, oh, you, 
dwell on it and rather than excel in right. your imperfections you dwell and you've thought about this yeah. before now it, it, it got it was one of those toby hooper moments that like got me so in depth i don't even remember what happens next in the movie and not only do you hate him and he's a douchebag person he's like legit not a good person yeah like so you don't even have to it's kind totally of okay yourself. to slap him Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the, there's no remorse towards him. And he, you know, and speak, speaking of Toby Hooper, because we're we're kind of talking about this, these spiritual or these haunting type movies. Yeah. Toby Hooper does Poltergeist. Oh man. And you know, that's an interesting, you know, haunting movie in a sense because you have a kind of a, you know, a slasher director. Yeah. And he's and there is a lot of violence in this movie. So started, that, that might be. Um, a spirit or haunting movie that you actually dig is Poltergeist, just because it You're, was a slasher director that did it, and, yeah. and there's a lot of violent scenes in yeah. that movie, so that's kind of crazy scene. interesting You're, take. Right you're absolutely right with that one, actually. That Poltergeist, I haven't seen it in a while, but I actually really, really fucking enjoyed that movie. That was done so fucking well. Yeah, and, yeah, and the the remake forward. they did recently was not good at it. It wasn't terrible, but it just yeah, didn't yeah. it didn't live up. I and, really like I'm a, I'm a Sam Rockwell fan, and he did a great job as the dad. And I thought the little girl who played Caroline was a good. I, I thought mm-hmm. it was an interesting twist of kind of you know giving the parent because in the first one you know they kind of show the parents on the bed smoking some doobies. You know they're yeah. kind of free spirited. It was the know? coach, man. Yeah, and, and then in this one the parents almost have like a drinking problem uh-huh. clearly, and they kind of associate with that that with the movie. Yeah. I thought it didn't do the movie that much justice because. Poltergeist was good because it was a little uplifting. You know, yeah. Toby Hooper, you know, they made the spirits at certain points cool and interacted with the family. Yeah, and yeah. this was a cool family. Like, this family didn't have, like, beef with each other. They weren't arguing. The kids were like, young and little, right. and the mom's smoking hot, and, uh, <laughs> and it's, you know, t- typical 80s. Right. And, uh, 80s moms, man. Yeah, it is. Those high shorts, they're coming back. Uh, um, but, you know, that was a really good spirit movie or haunting movie if you will well and and i feel like a lot of i mean don't get me wrong i know spielberg had a lot to do with it Uh but i think that you know he wanted um toby hooper to direct it for a reason i think that he saw a lot in toby hooper the angles and the tones that he would set with texas chainsaw massacre totally complimented a movie like poltergeist and um you saw a lot of toby hooper in that movie um, including, you know, even the tones great. and the the sound of the soundtrack. You know, the, that song was was really cool. I'm sure Spielberg had something to do with that. But yeah. there were tones throughout the movie um, that just, you know, I don't know. I think that Hooper's kind of king in that sense. Like, he does a good job of, like, developing a climate for a movie. You're on so, fire right now. Man, I can't. Talk about climate. It's getting hot, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got it. You know what? We got to do that movie on this podcast, The Poltergeist. I got the original one. I got to rewatch that. We got to do that movie because that that was a good one. It's so good, man, and um, you you totally dig the characters. You just removed the headstones. You didn't remove the body. I'm sitting, like when I'm a kid, I'm just like, oh my god, our fucking house is probably on something, dude. <laughs> Where was our house built, mom? Mom, we don't have a pool, right? <laughs> Another movie, before we get back into uh, Paranormal, that I want to do with you guys, I'm just thinking of it right now, because I'm reading the book, is um, Pet Cemetery, which oh, we're supposed to be doing a remake of. I'm down. I, I, I just did a blog on Pet Cemetery, and that movie's the shit. Like, that's that's one of those movies I could probably watch, like, once a month and be okay with it. Nice. You know? yeah. <laughs> I could watch that movie over and over again. I, I love that movie. It's They're pro- both good. Probably my favorite Stephen King movie. Nice. You know, mm. and a, a, an adaptation of, of his book anyway. Um, nothing against the new or even the 1990s It. I just um, – or or The Shining. I just – I don't know. Pet Cemetery kind of – Does it? it. For me, so. Yeah, that's a great, great story. Actually, and the little boy who plays Gage is the little boy – in Wes Craven's New Nightmare, so nice, that's awesome. Nice, and with um, the Pet Cemetery, I'm looking forward to the remake again. I've mentioned this on the podcast before. They're supposed it's supposed to be the same people that did the remake of It, which I'm excited for because they'll pull more. It's not going to be exactly like the book, but they pulled more from the book. I only know yeah. that because I read the, I was reading the book when the you know when the movie first came out. I did the I actually did the audio book just to get it finished so I can 
you know, listen to the whole book before I watch the movie. And I obviously wasn't shot for shot with the book, but there was a lot they pulled from the book, which I just enjoyed. So I'm hoping to do, excuse me, I'm hoping they do the same thing with Pet Cemetery because that would be yeah. fucking amazing. And real quick, I heard you guys mention a blog two times for our listeners and for me. Where can they find this amazing horror blog? People listen up because this is going to be awesome. NightmareShopLLC.com, as well as all of our badass horror merch, and a link to our YouTube page, Blue City Nightmares. You hear that? And so, yeah, Nightmare Shop LLC, you know, your new gateway to horror. Um, I don't know, we're just trying to smear the fear, I guess, and and um, we have anything from, you know, signed frame pictures to um, original horror scores on vinyl to... Um, Mass, Arrow, you know, Blu-rays, anything, man. We got it. Check them out, man. I've seen their site. They're awesome. I will be ordering some stuff from them probably after this con because I got to save some money for this con, but <laughs> I got to get some stuff from these guys. And then make it and then spend it all over again, man. We get it. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, by, ba- by the way, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, you know, to kind of get back to, I guess, um, paranormal we kind of talked about Toby Hooper, a slasher director doing kind of a more spiritual movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Nowadays, who do you think, um, whether it be a new director or, you know, as long as they're still uh, in existence, what is a good slasher director that, you know, you think would do well in, um, you know, a Bloomhouse type movie like The Conjuring or, you know, something like of a haunting type movie? I'm horrible with names. I can't think of his name off the top right now, but I would say the guy who did Terrifier, Damien something, I believe his name is. Oh, okay. Oh, his name's Because he could totally, yeah, here. Here, I got you. Yeah, we, he, he what could is totally his name? set a tone for a haunting type movie. There's There are some sets in Terrifier that you're like, that set alone was freaky. The, the, the whole feel of the movie was freaky, so I could totally see that. He'd do a good job. You know what was cool yeah. about that set, too, was, like, that... Like, when they went, remember how the bathroom was all nasty and shitty? That was real. That was no special effects. That place was really like that. Like, they had... I don't know what the budget was, but they didn't have a really big budget, so they were just, like... I, I believe they recorded the movie in Jersey, and it was just, like, in that that little area. Oh, Jersey. <laughs> which was dope. No, that is cool. Um, the director, and he also wrote... The Terrifier was Damien Leone. Damien Leone. I knew his first name was Damien. Damien yeah. Leone, yeah. Leone Leone, but I'm not sure how he pronounced it. But, uh, yeah, he wrote and directed Terrifier. Nice. Well, what about you, Keenan and John? Who do you think? Um, I, because he's kind of touched on the spiritual a little bit with horns. I think Alexander Aha could do a lot in a, uh, you know, paranormal haunting entity. You know, horns was... First of all, a great fall movie, which the season is finally here. And uh, it was a great like take on Satan and the devil and the monster that everyone associates with Satan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, religious. And I believe, I'm sorry, I meant to say Fede Alvarez. Not, uh, ah. Oh, so, you, so you, the guy that did, like, the Evil Dead and stuff? Yeah, yeah, but that was good, too. <laughs> I totally got off track, and then it popped back. I'm super high, so. <laughs> That's all right. I'm, I got a good buzz, so it's cool, man. It's cool. No, I think, well, they both would be good. I think AHA would be good. Either and, one of them. And Fede would, Fede would be kind of creepy. I feel like Fede would be your more, like, violent poltergeist type, type yeah. uh, horror. That was, that. Poltergeist was very violent. The fucking room. A tree we, tried to eat a child. Oh man, I got we. We're definitely doing that fucking movie, <laughs> yeah, ASAP. We gotta. We'll discuss that after the podcast. So as far as like when we can record with each other and stuff, we'll discuss that more because I got some ideas I want to tell you guys about. But um, shit. With this paranormal thing though, like, I don't know. She's got the lady who was in the first four. I forgot her name. I should look it up. But she's oh, um, going to be at Scaricon. Katie Featherston, I think, was yeah. the girl that played Katie. Yeah, she's going to be at Scaricon next month. The con I'm going to the, for, you know, the promo on my podcast and all that. So that's a big reason why I'm doing this movie and why I'm doing other movies. Like, if you go on their website, Scaricon.com, um, you'll see all the guests there. And any of those movies, this goes for any listeners, and this definitely goes for you too, too. 
any of those movies you see on that list, any of those actors you see on that list, you see something, you want to do a movie, let me know, because I'm trying to get all this stuff out before the con next month. Mm. So let me know. I'll send you guys the link after the after we were done recording, actually. Yeah, we'll check it out. Absolutely. No, she. I've heard that that she's. Um, first off, she seems. I, I don't know. She seems interesting. I know that right now she's like directing, or or helped directed a TV show called like The Solace of the Underworld or something, and it kind of looks like a cold case type show, That's I cool. guess. But um, it's interesting that she's kind of gone back and forth between acting and directing. It's cool that she's interested in both, I guess. That's awesome. Oh, cool when actors and actresses can kind of pursue their career further than what you would have expected. Like, uh, we watched a Scream documentary and saw that uh, Wes Craven let Jamie Kennedy direct a couple scenes in, uh, you know, I think it was Scream 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was more or less just for fun, but... It was cool, and then Jamie Kennedy went on to write and direct, you know, some of his own stuff, and you know, and now back in horror and like the Tremors movies and shit. But uh, you know, it's always cool when actors and actresses can do that kind of shit. I think. I agree. I definitely agree with that. No, you go ahead. How that movie was made with you know for how much money it would just be interesting to talk to anyone that was on that set and be like yeah. so how did you guys make this work and whose house was it shot yeah at? where did you guys because i i think the film itself takes place in san diego but i mean i, I don't know if they filmed there or not yeah but who knows it's interesting that hollywood is a bunch of lies and a really cool thing about <laughs> other actors that have been in paranormal <laughs> activity like that's kind of the only movie they did there's a there's a like Micah, yeah. the guy that played um, Micah, I think his name was, I think his real name is Micah too. It's like Micah Street or something like that. Cool. Um, he was really only in the par other Paranormal Activity movies. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that th that's like really some of the only movies that they've done. Might not need to do anything. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah, he's just like, hey, I did four awesome movies, son. Yeah, no joke. So. I mean, I don't really know many actors that don't necessarily do other movies, but... Another thing I like is, like, when the actors and actresses do come back and, like, you know, the, the two, Katie and Mika um, come back for a combined, like, six of these. And, um, you know, you don't get that a lot. You, you get a lot of people that come back and you get different characters. Like, how cool would it have been to have Patricia Arquette in A Nightmare on Elm Street 4? Oh, or yeah. Johnny Depp. Because Johnny so Depp scary. even came back in Part 6 in Freddy's Dead for a cameo. Oh. Uh, in that scene on the TV when, uh, uh, what's his name, Brecken Meyer, mm -hmm. before he was killed in the video game version. Oh, yeah, that's right. Johnny that's right. Depp comes back in a commercial. He does This Is Your Brain on Drugs, the, yeah, the yeah. dare commercial. Yeah, that's right. totally. I totally wow. forgot about that. So, so that's kind of, you know, I like when, at, even, the, you know, Mika Street hasn't done anything else, but he's been in most of the paranormals. That's cool to me. I think, I think I it agree. also says, it says a lot about, you know, Gloomhouse, and it says a lot about, the directors that they, you know, have do these movies. It just seems like right. you all you always have actors or actresses that want to come back and do these movies, like with James Wan or Lee Wanell, you yeah. know, with the Conjurings or the Insidious movies. Like it's cool that you have Rose Byrne in multiple movies and yeah. you have Patrick Wilson in multiple movies. Yeah. It says a lot about Bloomhouse to be honest. Well yeah, they you know, they're they're obviously very cool to work with. I got a question for you too. What's up? It's a remake question. How long do you guys think people should have to wait for someone to make a remake of a movie? How many years? I say 10 years. 10 years? Ten? I say 10 years. Uh, I was going to say like 25. <laughs> 25? <laughs> yeah. Because if there's still sequels coming out from the original series, don't remake it. Let those sequels come out or make a new sequel. Yeah, and like some of them. Well, like, and I'm assuming too, like if they're doing remakes, then the series has been over. But yeah, you know. I mean, but like, for example, the Child's Play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don Mancini uh, just came out with a sequel last year with Cult. It was really fucking good, and it had humor and brutality, and it was awesome. Yes. Now he's doing a show. And these motherfuckers want to make a remake of the original Child's Play <laughs> with some fucking dead silence looking ass porcelain and, doll. And it's Blue, it's Bloomhouse, right? That wants to do it, or I, or, I, or is it somebody? I don't know. Is it Bloomhouse? I, I, we have to look it up. We, I guess. 
I'll watch that. Are you guys gonna watch that movie though? Yes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Here's what, I, here's, here's what I have to say about remakes. Okay. <clears throat> remakes. As much as people don't fucking like remakes, okay, some of my favorite fucking movies are remakes. Mm-hmm. The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, or David Cronenberg's um, The Fly. There's a lot of, you know... Friday 13th remake. Friday 13th reboot. Uh, reboot was really good. Okay. I, I enjoy, enjoy, so it's... And don't get me wrong, some are horrible, and I get it. Um, but it's just kind of like, I feel like... You, yeah, you, unfortunately, you have to give it a chance. Yes. It's just upsetting that no one went to Mr. Mancini and asked him to continue a masterpiece. You he know? didn't even know about it. Yeah, and I think really? that's what's upsetting. That's what's upsetting is he like came out and they was didn't like, even I, ask. Yeah, they didn't even ask him if he wanted to do. You know, dude's which, been involved in all of them. It's crazy to think that Don Mancini has zero rights in that sense. Right. That's and disrespectful. That's yeah, everything about it's wrong. So it's it's not that it's a remake that has bothered me. And the same with this Halloween, okay? Yeah. It's not that that bothers me. It's just that um, it, I guess it's the fact that, they, to me, they went about it wrong. If you wanted to retell the story, why don't you go to the fucking dude who created it? Right. And um, I, it, it is a little bit disrespectful. What I like about the remake of Halloween is – I think it's great that at least John Carpenter is involved. Yeah. You know, and it's a shame that um, Don Mancini is going to have nothing to do with it. It's it'll be the first one ever in which Don Mancini has nothing to do with. So, it's um I don't know. It just it sucks. The same with Brad Dorf. Yeah, I was right. just the, just about to say that. Like, who's going to be the voice of Chucky? There's there's certain voices you cannot replace. Chucky's one, and I'll say Candyman's another because there's rumors that they want to do a remake of Candyman, and I'm like. Jordan Peele wanted to do that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He wants to direct it. And I, me personally, I still feel Tony Ty can still play the role. And I say that. I know he's older, but it's his voice is so iconic, for one. And two, the movie wasn't really that action-packed to where he needs to do too much as far as, right. you know, stunt-wise and all that craziness. So, well, there's stuntmen now, too. Either. True, like, true. They, they can figure that out. Which I read that Bloomhouse wants to do that. And they want to do Scream. I heard they wanted to do. Um, they wanted to get. Tr- they've been trying for years. I guess they want to get the rights for Friday the Thirteenth, which I wouldn't be mad at that if that happened. But oh, that'd be awesome. Well, it's just you know the, with fr- you know all this bullshit that's going on with Friday the Thirteenth right now and Paramount and which they know, settled today. Which they settled today. It's one of those things where I can see where Bloomhouse kind of stayed away and it's like, hey, get this shit revolved, resolved first, and then we'll come talk to you. So I bet I do. I bet in the next fucking month we hear Bloomhouse picks up Friday the Thirteenth. I hope so. so. I I would love to see. I mean, if they made thirteen more of those movies, I'd watch every single one of them. I would love oh, to see yeah. at least one more excellent movie. And they don't have to go back to when he was a kid either. Just make something where he's already an adult and just killing a bunch of horny teenagers. Just just do that for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, um, I think that's what made Killer Cut so successful. Is they just they just did that, you know? They mm-hmm. didn't give you this in depth plot. It didn't. It doesn't fucking have to be. You just had these fucking teenagers going out looking for some fucking green, finding it and getting killed in the process. Yes, so, exactly. I don't know. It, it was perfect. It was it was it was a huge love letter to the original. So if you want to do that, you you're still gonna make money. People are still gonna love that franchise. It's one franchise that I feel like some in some way almost can't be dented. Because as long as you keep that fucking blueprint of, all right, as long as you're killing more than 25 people, you're good. Mm-hmm. A couple, couple titties here and there. Um, this is going to be a good Friday the 13th movie. I know? agree. So. One thing I will say, though, which I hope they do, if they were to do this movie over again, is or a remake, whatever you want to call it, is they do it in the 80s, though. Like, I love the 80s vibe of, a sla- of j- Friday the 13th in general, just that slasher vibe in the 80s it's so perfect it's just that's one big thing i did not like about the 2009 remake or two was it 2009 uh yeah i think so i think so that's one big thing i like about the remake i enjoyed the remake don't get me wrong i enjoyed the remake i enjoyed the kills but i think i would have enjoyed the movie more if it was that 80s vibe instead of the 09 vibe so if they say this movie comes out in two years i would like that 80s vibe instead of the 2020 vibe like i don't 
I don't know. It, it would just, it would, cause I feel like it would be a little bit darker. It would have, it would be a little scary because you don't have all the technology. Like in a slasher film from the eighties, you don't have your cell phone to call for help. You have to fucking fend for yourself, run, go to the next cabin, go to a pay phone, whatever. Nowadays, actually, you can pick one of these shits up and fucking call somebody like, hey. <laughs> I actually read a really cool article on how pivotal it is to um, have at least one scene dedicated to all the internet going down in modern horror. Like, oh shit, my cell phone won't work. Oh my god, there's no reception. Oh my god, my computer isn't charged, so I can't turn it on. Where will we hide? Um, <laughs> and it's, you know, that's it. It's more and more in every modern horror movie. So it would be cool, like, the forgotten years, Jason Voorhees. Yeah. That's you know, a good idea. Exactly. It could just be um, – We speaking of, like, ideas we've had for new Friday the 13th, my idea or, like, what I thought they could always run with is um, you had almost like a boy's home with um, all these, like, dudes that have kind of broken the law at a young age – and as some kind of a work study or community service, they have to go back to this old campsite that they're going to fix up and build up and do all this stuff. And I thought it'd be kind of cool if there was some, you know, fucking around with the guards and stuff like yeah. that. And Jason uh, goes Jay to juvie. Yeah, Jason goes through all these, like, kind of badass dudes. You know, it'd be interesting to see, like, these, you know, kind of bad dudes, yeah. like, Go up against Jason. Yeah, mm -hmm. a huge I'll fucking take him. Yeah, I've played hockey. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just think there'd be a lot of cool kills there. Yeah, you know, and then maybe have cool. a couple female guards in there. Yep, get some sex on. It'd be, it'd be perfect. Yeah. yeah, I like. I actually really like that idea, and I like that cheesy line you threw out because a a classic slasher movie needs at least one or two cheesy lines, if not more. And that right there would be perfect. I could take yeah. him. I used to play hockey. <laughs> You see a hockey mask, you think Jason Voorhees. Yeah. You're right. So, so um, with this porn paranormal, what do you guys um, at a you know one to ten rating? What would you guys give the those two movies? When I first saw it, nine, because <laughs> mm. I was fucking scared. Yeah. Now as we went back and kind of rewatched it a few times, um, probably like a. Seven. Okay. I like. I I think it's still cool. You know, it's still. Every time you know, you rewatch a horror movie so many times, you get nostalgic. Like you said, like you like slashers because you were introduced to it when you were mm -hmm. young. Um, every time I watch Paranormal Activity, I remember how scared I was the first time watching it. So it still has that kind of like, okay, I know I'm gonna be okay. I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'd give it a seven, seven out of ten. Not I bad. I actually agree with that. Like, uh, I I try to think of it uh, with open mind, um, because I'm with you, sir, sturdy. I'm I'm more of a slasher or a creature feature guy or whatever. Um, but I think that um, as as far as like hauntings, or you know, I think it was kind of a revolution in that sense, and um, I think. It's deserving to be in that like seven out of ten range, you know. So nice. I think people who are into it or into the hauntings or Amityville or whatever, um, I think that you know they're drawn to a paranormal activity, yeah. and I think it did nothing but good for horror. So I give I give it seven out of ten. Seven out of ten stabs. I'm gonna jump on that with you guys too. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten, and like, what's making me give it a seven out of ten is how you guys. One big thing is the budget. The budget was real small, and that right there is just that's amazing what they did with that budget. Right. And then the profit they made off of it, obviously. And then just like I said, like how the ending was crazy, how the ending of the first one, if I'm not mistaken, she killed her boyfriend. Yeah. And the ending of the second one is when um there wasn't the father talking to his wife, which was her sister, and they kind of put whatever was going on, they put that on the sister. Yeah, yeah. Which... Yeah was a pretty cool connection with that. And then it's just like, first of all, that's some fucked up shit. Like you could at least, if you're going to do some shit like that, at least warn me, like, listen, Aaron, um, I'm going to put this evil spirit on you. Cause I can't handle it. Just give me a heads up. So I can at least be prepared or I can pass it on to someone else. But they just like threw it on her. I will say that 
in this first one. The first I remember even the first time I watched it, I was like, Man, if I was Micah, I'd be fucking pissed. Like oh, you didn't fuck, mention yeah. any of right. this. What the fuck, I Katie? think there's even a line in the movie where he says something along the lines like, this wasn't like a second or third date conversation. Yeah. Or she says, and she's like, this isn't something I want to brought up on a first date. And he's like, the 20th date, maybe. <laughs> you, know, and you, know, you know what the best thing to come of this movie was, though? Was Marlon Wayne's A Haunted House. Oh, <laughs> yes. Fuck, that movie was fun. Hilarious. Was like, and before... Uh, of spoof movies that this movie cre- or this franchise created it, oh, it, it yeah. they're yes. haunted house one and two are funny hilarious <laughs> from stl yeah as father doug is one of the funniest <laughs> parts of the movie yeah yeah cedric the entertainer is the best part of that movie yeah. oh my that goodness is is how you doing crazy bitch <laughs> <laughs> that movie was so freaking funny and with the um <laughs> you know what you know what's funny about the paranormal thing is I was watching that with my wife, right? She tells me that, um, you know, if we're in this situation, say that haunting or whatever is following me, she's leaving. I was like, I don't blame you. <laughs> she's like, I'm just going to leave you. Cause... Dude, loyalty. You know, here's the, here's the big thing is, you know, she's at least being honest with you. Yeah. That's what I tell my wife. I would be like, Katie, I love you, but I'm going to be like, we could, we could Skype. There you go. <laughs> we, could, we could Skype until all this shit's over with. And then, and then everything else will be fine. We'll figure it out. Yeah, you figure that shit out first. <laughs> I'd be dead before my wife even knew what was up. <laughs> yeah, John, John's the first to go. Unfortunately, and I fucking love you, and I'm going to miss the shit out of yeah. you. But John is the first to go. Yeah, right? I'm going to so. panic or think I'm tough and get shot down. <clears throat> See, I'm. you guys already know the reason. I'm black, so I'm definitely dying first. <laughs> so you might be second. <laughs> Change that man with yeah, Get Out yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, they're gonna, yeah. they're they are. Just, you know, all they they were doing some messed up stuff to those folks and Get Out. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's a scary situation right there. That like, oh shit. Freak me out. That that movie's kind of like Red State in a sense. Yeah. Like, cause I remember watching that movie. Like, this is fucked up. Brainwashing on, on, on is so just many scary. Levels. Yeah. Any mm-hmm. form of brainwashing is like whether it be for using them as their their help or using them for religious beliefs, like in a red state, or oh. doing them cult stuff, like, uh, you know, Manson family stuff. Like, it's just, it's fucked up. Yeah, I'm at the point now, if I see an old white lady stirring tea, I'm smacking it out of her hand. <laughs> 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 just to be safe. Have you ever seen Get Out, bitch? What the fuck? What are you doing? I will not sit in this chair directly across from you. Nope. Uh, uh, yeah, fuck, that movie was messed up. Good movie though overall, but it was it was crazy, crazy movie. Don't get, don't get me wrong, like not that it wasn't deserving of any, you know, like I I can think of other horror movies that I personally thought were better, yeah. But, but I still think that this what was cool. This movie was so original, yeah, and legit scary. Like I remember watching it thinking like this is unbelievable. Like the whole time, like sitting up, like this is unreal. This dude's just doing sprints. This shit door. happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll be. I I can't wait to see um Jordan Peele do some more horror movies. Like if he can, I hope he can get the right. The, you know, can do Candyman because I think he'll do a good job with that movie. I like the way he thinks. Yeah, I, we were kind of talking about who he might even cast as Candyman because we yeah. were thinking like who who could because that's so hard to do in a sense of what um you know. Todd could do with his voice and yeah. stuff like that. It was, I don't know. It's just, an, it's a tough character to kind of repeat. But I do think that that's the guy to direct it. I think that he could totally yeah. do something with Candyman. It's just, I'm curious on how he's going to. He could be, uh, what's that cat that's in all those kung fu movies? Um, oh, like Falcon Rising? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. What he is could it? be that guy. Well, he was the guy that was spawned. Yes. He oh, was spawned. Michael J. White. Yeah, yeah, he could do it. He could lose a little weight. He's almost too, yeah, he's almost too ripped. Yeah. See, he wears the, long coat. the only yeah, thing with. No, no one's cutting that dude's hand off. I mean, he's going to kill everyone out there. He's just cutting other people's hands off. The, the only thing with that, though, it's just the voice. Like, the voice is so iconic. I don't know how you, it's like Doug Bradley. It's like, you know, what? what's so hard to repeat as Pinhead is Doug Bradley's voice and his yes. delivery. I feel like Tony Todd had that same, like, 
You know, like he yeah. had that delivery and could do that shit with his voice. It he, was the main reason the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot flopped was Jackie R. Haley didn't necessarily do this awful job, but his voice was nothing compared to Robert England's. See, with that too, it's not only the voice, but I think it was the look they went with Freddie in that movie. The like, more liberal burns. It was just, uh, it didn't, I don't know. And like, it's not like, um, I'll say like Halloween and Friday the 13th, even though I think Kane Hodder was the best Jason ever. You can put, you can throw a mask on somebody, throw a suit on them. And as long as they have the walk, a decent walk down, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not too bad because they don't have any voice. They don't have any vocal lines, but. Right. Yeah. It's a character that can like literally speak through his actions. Yeah, exactly. That's why Kane was so good is because, you know, like. Man, like Kane could do a stance, and you're like, "Oh, Jason's his." Mm-hmm. Piss off, Jason off. You're dead. <laughs> you know, so he had that ability to like, speak through his movements, and that's I think that's what makes him so great with with Jason or with Victor Crowley. And no disrespect to the gentleman who played um Jason in Freddy vs. Jason, I just think it would have been that much better if Kane Hodder got to play that role. Could, if they yeah, didn't pick him over. King Kersinger was is is a, is a, was a good Jason. Uh, they said that Ronnie Yu wanted to go with him just because of his height. Yeah. But it's kind of like, I mean, dude, they make Tom Cruise look 6'10". Like, why couldn't they just fucking do right, that dude. with Kane Hodder? Mm-hmm. Tom Cruise is 2'8". 2'8 on stilts. It's really just his head. It's like Futurama. They just have a fucking floating head. Mm-hmm. And with um with the Kane Hodder thing, too, like Robert Englund and Kane Hodder, they wanted to be in the movie together, and then they just... Fuck Kane, Kane over. Even, we watched an interview with Kane Hodder, and he was just like, "Yeah, I didn't. They didn't even call me. Mm-hmm. They just. I, I heard about it, and then I heard that they had started filming. Yeah. But he was in it. Yes, he was in we it. We found out that like there's a scene where I guess someone's watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it's when they're going to get their meds up in the loony bin. Yeah, and he, because Kane Hodder did a lot of stunts as Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Part and it, three, right? Yeah, three. part three. Yep. And so I guess he's on, or there was a scene with, yeah, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 in the background, and Kane's like, so technically I did make the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you but, know what's uh, cool about Kane, too, is, like, he he played he played his Leatherface, he played his Jason, and then the other Jason goes to hell. That was him pulling the, the mask down with the Freddy glove. Yeah, he so you can say technically he played that. And yeah, yeah. Um, I did read his book, but... I was gonna. What was I gonna say? Oh, he was saying how he wanted a role in the um the new Halloween movie. Just a scene with the mask on, walking, just to say he can play all Michael. Also, that would have been awesome. Oh, that's cool. You'd be like the four. Yes, and I would get his autograph for all four of them. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that would be the. Sh- <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's it's. You're right though. I wish for well, Ronnie. You got him in there. Yeah, I think what. The reason people don't consider it Freddy versus Jason is because it's not Robert England versus Kane Hodder. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you do that. I don't know how you, you know, at this point, how you can do it, but they uh, should do. A it's, dual... it's good that Ronnie, you got a bride of Chucky. But yeah, he kind of, he kind of fucked it up when he couldn't get yeah. Kane Hodder in there. You know what they should do is just do an all behind the scenes documentary interview, whatever, with Robert England and Kane Hodder, and let them shoot the shit. About horror for two hours. I'll watch that. Yeah, I would watch that. I'd go watch that shit in theaters. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'll pay eleven twenty five to go watch that. Hey. that it, both are just super interesting, and Robert England like can you know entertain a crowd. Not that Kane can't, but right. it just seems like Robert England can feed into a crowd. Right. So I I don't know. That it's crazy how noticeable Kane Hodder is compared to like. A Robert England or Doug Bradley or a Tony Todd who you've seen their face. Most of the time you don't see Kane Hodder's face, but if you see Kane Hodder, you know it's Kane Hodder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool. Like he's a unmasked legend. He is, and I've met I met Robert, I met Kane, and the thing with Kane is it's like he's just he has like this persona, like this aura around him. Maybe it's just because Jason's my favorite slasher too. But he has like to me, he has like this aura around him where he's just so welcoming, and not that Robert England isn't, because he is. But it's just, it's a little bit different. Like Kane really is there. He he's hilarious for one. Like I've told this story before. I'm sure I told you guys. When I went to Monster Mania out in Jersey, I was taking a dump in the stall, <laughs> and uh, 
He was over at some guy was at the urinal. I don't know if Kane walked next to him or if he, you know, did the, you know, the guy rule. You keep at least one in between, if not more. But yeah. all that I heard Kane Hodder going in the bathroom, peeing, talks to the guy next to him. Hey, nice cock. I was dying. <laughs> like that. I was rolling. And again, I know I've told this story on the podcast. I heard he likes playing pranks on people. And yeah. Like, I heard he's just like, it's. I don't know. It's just cool when people like that um, are involved with horror. You yeah. Know? And it goes to show, like, there's a lot of good in horror. And um, it's a lot of stuff that I feel like too many people don't see. Yeah. I agree. And I feel every anybody who is a horror fan, wherever you live, find out what horror conventions are near you. And when they get these guests going there or the, the celebrities going there, go check those out because these people are really down to earth. Like, I've been to Scarecon. I think this is my I think this is my fifth time going. I'm not 100% sure. I forgot. But like they're so down to earth, they're so cool, they're so friendly and if there's nobody in like say if it's us three going there as friends, they'll talk to us for like 10 15 if there's nobody in line, they'll talk to you. They'll talk your ear off just going back and forth talking about the movies and all that, which is just as a fan, it makes you appreciate them more, it makes you appreciate the horror more, it makes you appreciate their movies more just because of that small aspect of them just Showing you like they appreciate you coming to the con, not just signing your autograph and pushing it off the table, but you know, next, next, right. they're really there to talk to you, and I, that I love it about that. That's what keeps me going back to these cons every freaking year. Totally, there's so much heart and emotion that go into horror movies, and whether you're watching them or whether you're directing them or whether you're acting in them, and it it shows through the actors and actresses and directors because you know. There's so much that goes into it, and um, you always have actors that come back. You know, oh, yeah. like there's there are certain people out there, um, like a Brad Dorif or whoever, yeah. that comes back and does these roles over and over again. Yeah. Not because they have to, you know, it's because they want to. Well, they want to come back, and and I think part of that is the horror community and horror fans yeah. that are just badass. Well, I mean, like look at like a, like a. Hatchet movie, Kane Hodder's been in them, Tony Todd, Robert England. Yeah. You know, like, it, they, these movies are, as much as they are entertaining, uh, they're what inspired, I'll speak for the three of us right now, what inspired us to do what we want to do in life. Yeah. You know, they are definitely a huge part of, uh, I'm sure, millions and millions of people's lives. And uh, it's just, it shows a lot when they do give a shit to talk to you for 15 minutes. Because 15 minutes of their time could be used to. You know, probably a lot more useful shit than getting asked, yeah. asked the same question they've been asked a million times. But it, it's it's cool that they show. You know, I've heard other people like Lisa Rose is like that. Yes, I heard she's very nice and talks a lot. She we've is. Heard, we've heard mixed things um, about certain people, but mm -hmm. someone that we had a really cool encounter with and actually talked to us uh, was at a horror hound in Indianapolis. Was Tom Savini? Yes, nice. And, cool. Um, we've always heard mixed things, mm, yeah. but our, our experience with, with him was great, and it was cool talking effects. For me, it yeah. was cool talking effects with somebody. And honestly, we had just a really legit conversation. Like, it was like, oh, man, how, how are you? How, you know, and he was like, oh, good. Been up at fucking three in the morning. Had to come here instead of my boo. <laughs> man, that's crazy. We were driving all night from St. Louis. We were talking about this movie and that. And, yeah. Um, you know, it was cool. It wasn't. We didn't really ask him questions necessarily. More so, as we were able to, like you said, converse with him. Mm -hmm. Yep. That and that's what I love about these cons. Like it's every con that I've been to so far, I've got to converse with. I'll say at least one to two of these people there for a few minutes, quite a few minutes. Talk to them, get their autograph, obviously take a picture with them, and they're just so they're so friendly. Like last year for Lisa Rose, me and my two brothers went to um, Scarecon last year, got her autograph and all that stuff. We walked by her table about four or five times just because we're walking around the con to where she would call, hey, Aaron, come over. Hey, that's, you know, hey, hey, Aaron, how you guys doing? Hey, Rob, hey, Henry, how you guys doing? Like, just talking to us. And say there's 2,000 people that for, for them just to remember your name, it's just like that that right there just means a lot. Right. Yeah. Oh, man, it's so cool. It's, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> horror is the shit. It really is. <laughs> and going back to what you were saying about the horror, like, the passion of horror that these characters have it's also with us fans i mean shit I, i'm doing a podcast about it you guys have a a fucking store selling horror merchandise like it's it's huge and i 
I like I like how over the past few years it's actually been growing a lot more and becoming yeah. more popular. To me, it's my favorite genre. I can't wait for it to be. I would love for it to be like the most popular genre, but not too yeah. much to where they overkill it and water it down. But just up there to where it gets that respect it deserves, like it used to back in the day. And I think I think you have you know it's starting to you know like. Uh, movies like uh, Shape of Water winning awards and uh, yeah, when it, Del Toro movie, you know, and um, you know Get Out, which we talked about earlier, um, winning awards. So um, I don't know. I think I feel like horror is starting to kind of um, turn people's heads and get some attention. Yeah. So it's 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 getting there, and we just got to hold on tight and enjoy. Well, the ride. let's thank the people like Jason Bloom and Bloomhouse who did. The paranormal activity. Yep. Mm-hmm. I and mean, that's kind of where it started again. I mean, he's done. Bloom House has done um, Split, Sinister, Get Out, um, The Bay, which is on Shutter. If you guys Creep, haven't seen The Bay, the it's Purge awesome. is, Purge has a show now. The Insidious movies and the Ouija movies. Visit, Oculus. I don't know. It's it has a. He's done a lot of cool stuff, and it's 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 kind of pulling in a new generation. So it's cool. Now, I if I can remember correctly, I remember, I think I remember you guys saying you guys had a kind of a story, something about St. Louis with the whole paranormal thing, when we were doing this paranormal activity thing. Um. Well, we don't. St. Louis has a, a bunch of hauntings. Yeah. But what's cool about St. Louis is they are. We have. We're known for The Exorcist. So the okay. movie The Exorcist, uh, it was filmed in D.C. But um, yeah, it's Georgetown. actually it's actually based off of um, a boy who came to St. Louis looking for for I guess spiritual help due to like you know a demon had possessed his body and um, the deacon here and all these local priests I guess helped um, exercise him yeah it was and, that, and, and it was in a hospital it was at St. Election Brothers Hospital I think it's off Grand Avenue down yeah. on the south side of St. Louis. And uh, there's a room there that, like, cracked down the middle while this little boy was in the hospital. Yeah. And they, like, quarantined the room. Yeah, they I don't know. I don't know if it's still quarantined, but, like, I, you know, I lived on the south side growing up, so that's the hospital we went to, if, you know, in case of emergencies. And uh, I remember it being sectioned off, like, the whole fucking hallway. Was that's awesome. Off. You couldn't go back there. Yeah. Um, Is the there... Only, like, no, yeah. go ahead. The only like paranormal thing that's kind of close to us is in uh, Alton, Illinois. Alton, Illinois, which is like it's right across the river, like yeah. forty minutes from where our asses are parked right now. Yeah. Um, but they have a, a bunch of cool, like the whole town is haunted. Um, they have like haunted mansions. There's a we went to a uh, pie restaurant once that had like uh, someone living there from the other world, and wow. they'd be like, "Oh, well, that's just Charlie," because glasses and shit would fall off the counter. Yeah. Like, dude, you better tell Chuck to knock it the fuck off. Yeah, I paid for this. I paid for this. He better clean that shit up or give me some money. But, but the, like Greg said, the Exorcist is the big deal here. Yeah, it's 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 cool that we kind of have that little mark, you know. And the the Lemp the Lemp Mansion. Yeah. Yeah, uh, which is actually a haunted house, part of STL Scarefest, and they do the House of the Occult now. You go down, and it's like a demon themed haunted house. Mm-hmm. That's like. Town, St. Louis, and then, and but the building itself is known to be haunted. Yeah, it's like the only you can, pay, you can pay money and go like sleep in the rooms there, and yeah. like people say they hear stuff. They do like murder mystery dinners, or like they yeah. set up a scene for you and like scare the shit. It's really cool. It's cool. Nice, nice. So St. St. Louis is scary, and it's just they don't have. Yeah, at the same time, like it's a shame we don't have like a con or anything like that. It'd be at some point it'd Not be yet. excellent for the nightmare shop or. Uh, Sir Sturdy to come out and yeah. freaking open up a horror con. They've never really. There's a lot of small ones around yeah. in the area, but it'd be cool if at some point St. Louis is ho- hosted yeah, like a we'll whole or something. We'll like have that. the Nightmare Shop. We'll have Sir Sturdy. We'll have <laughs> Corey Trim Creation. Absolutely. There you go. Got to get it started somehow, man. I would love to have one up here, but I mean, like the con that I go to out Scarecon's about hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. But I'd love to have one in Albany, New York, a horror convention. It'd be awesome it's the capital of freaking new york there's like nothing in this capital that right there would be dope to have though that would be awesome man that'd be cool right in your backyard yes yes i wouldn't have to travel i I, oh this is a question for later i guess but 
I got a personal question for you when we're done with this, buddy. All right. Well, I mean, I'm pretty much I'm good. If you guys want to plug anything, we can end it, yeah, wrap it up. Yeah, yeah okay, totally. Cool. Uh, everyone who's listening, make sure to subscribe to Horror with Sir Sturdy. This dude's awesome. He has a bunch of cool guests on here. Thank you for letting us come on again and talk about paranormal activity in the Bloom House films. Um, if you want to check out us, we're the Nightmare Shop. We are your new gateway to horror where all your nightmares come true. Find us at thenightmareshopllc.com, Facebook and Instagram at the.nightmare.shop, Twitter at underscore nightmare underscore shop. You can check us out on Pinterest at the Nightmare Shop LLC. And we also have a VisiCast on YouTube and on our page. Make sure to subscribe to the Nightmare Shop to check out Blue City Nightmares. I know you guys heard that, so go definitely check these two guys out. They're fucking awesome. Out there in St. Louis, if you're there locally in St. Louis and you're listening to this podcast, go to their store, check it out, tell them Search Dirty sent you, and go to their website, check that out. It's freaking amazing, and if there's something that they don't have at their store, you let them know you really want it, they will get it for you. Trust me on that one. Check them out, definitely. You know where to find me, Horror with Search Dirty, everywhere, and uh, just do this, listen to this podcast, keep subscribing, keep sharing. Keep, you know, keep the horror coming. If you ever want to be on an episode, email me at horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening, subscribing, and supporting, and sharing. And as always, I'll see you in your night.